let's begin by reviewing. You came to Iboga Quest about seven months ago. Mm -hmm. And what was the reason that you came and how did it go? Um, I think the key reason I came, I've had experience with other plant medicines and I'm always on a journey for my own self-improvement and self-betterment. Um, and especially when that shows that we can be, we're all connected, um, right? There's no, there is a self, but there isn't. Um, and I came across Iboga as uh, another way to learn from a plant master and to just get, I guess, more answers and a, a better understanding of myself and the general human collective. And what was your experience like when you were actually under the influence of it? It was interesting. Um, I, I think it should be noted that it's not, you, this should not be something that is ever for recreational purposes. It, it was not fun. And I say that not to scare anyone. Um, it wasn't painful. I never felt like I was in danger or anything like that, but it, you essentially come face to face with yourself and all you have is you're there with yourself. And sometimes you have to work out some very difficult conversations and you have to work through some very difficult thought patterns. So mm -hmm. I remember a large portion was me just kind of wrestling with myself, you know, and resisting what was. And it wasn't until I surrendered that it became a lot easier. It's been a while. Um... Can you feel like there's been benefit from it? Yeah, I think now I'm at the portion though where it's practice, practice, practice. Um, so speaking of surrendering, the main message that I got was almost a mantra. And it was in any present moment, you have a choice. And the mantra that I received was, or the, that I was forced to practice in during ceremony was I choose peace, I choose love, I choose light, and I choose trust. And how, and once I got it, you know, and surrendering to, you have a choice, um, surrendering to that message, it became very clear that I have that choice in waking life, normal life every day. And now it's that practice, right? Because it's very, it's a very easy concept. It's a very difficult thing to implement, especially when, you know, I live in, in New York City. Uh, we're amidst of a global pandemic. So there's a lot of uncertainty and it's very easy to forget that. And not only that, but we have our own mind that's constantly thinking. And I, I mean, I'm a big feeler, so we're constantly feeling certain things. And you can see that, how difficult it is to slip into not being present in the moment and not only being present, but choosing peace, choosing light, choosing love and choosing trust. So that was the biggest takeaway for me. And I would say that I'm still practicing it every single moment. So have, have people in your life, family members or others, dogs, cats, noticed the difference? I would say yes. Um, at least for, well, cause my family didn't see me directly after, um, but they noticed when I was having conversations with them, um, last year, it was very difficult for me. I, um, had a lot of personal challenges. Um, mm -hmm. and I didn't, the last thing that I wanted to, to be was to be become embittered by them, mm -hmm. uh, right. You can get bitter or you can get better. And I didn't want that to cease my outlook on life and to cease my optimism and, and the fact that, or the belief that there is always something better for us that's around the corner. Um, and when I spoke with them, uh, they said that I sounded like myself again. And wow. I felt like myself for the first time in a long time. So now since then, there's been a lot that's happened. Um, so that's where the practice, the continuous practice comes into play. But I will say immediately after, uh, there was a, a profound sense of clarity. Mm -hmm. And again, translating that clarity into my everyday being. 
So what would you say about your experience at Iboga Quest? Oh my gosh. Uh, like all the good words in the dictionary and all the positive adjectives that one can find in the dictionary. Like just all of that. Um, I'm honestly, just gather the whole from A to Z, every positive word that you can think of or find and put that into Iboga Quest because the, the team was absolutely exceptional. Um, the professionalism was off the charts. Um, I knew that I had a, a, a feeling that this would be the best possible place that I could do it. Uh, and I was, I was right. I, I couldn't imagine doing it in any other circumstance, in any other setting, in any other capacity. Because when you are doing plant medicines, set and setting is everything. If you do not feel safe, um, and if you do not trust the people that are taking care of you, it's not going to go well. I, I guarantee you, because I've been there, you will have a really bad experience. And I, it was incredible. Um, I mean, the, the folks at Iboga Quest, uh, the whole team is just absolutely wonderful. The place itself is beautiful. Um, I could go on and on, but I, I know you don't have like five hours, so, <laughs> but it was incredible. It was really, I, I wouldn't do it anywhere else, anywhere else. Any advice you would give to someone in your situation or similar situation? If you are very curious about Iboga or any plant medicine, but especially Iboga, if you are curious about what it can possibly teach you, and if you, if you go in with a completely open mind, and knowing that whatever you are shown is for your own benefit, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it sucks, even if it's painful, and that you are dedicated to leveling up as a human, of becoming a better human. And I will say for anyone that's interested in Iboga is that again, it does not, it, it's not a miracle cure. And, and, and you guys have said this as well. The team at Iboga Quest has said this. This is not a silver bullet. This isn't, you know, something you come in, you do once, and then, oh my gosh, my life has changed forever. It opens up your mind. It is truly a portal to wisdom that we are not privy to in the everyday. But that's where the practice component comes in. So if you're doing this with other self-improvement and self-development and a, a true yearning to seek out the highest truth and highest good for yourself and all mankind, then yeah, yeah, you should absolutely do it. You should dive in and, and you should experience this for yourself. Iboga is obviously a really important um, support, an aid, a tool, uh, a medicine for working with your path. How have you found, what have you found that you can integrate into your life now to keep that going? So the mantra, first and foremost, when I, right, I choose peace, I choose love, I choose light, and I choose trust. Um, and interestingly enough, for me, the way that that's translated is the, the teachings of Eckhart Tolle. Uh, right, uh -huh. where it's kind of that the really, truly the power of now, it all distills down to this, and there's so much aliveness in this moment, but oftentimes we are closed off to it because we're so consumed in the human level of things, and so that really has become the practice. Uh, again, I got a glimpse into what that lesson looked like. Practicing it is something next level. <laughs> 